Welcome to this um, first set of slides dealing with the second module in our Spatial Data Analysis for Social Scientists course. This module de deals with uh, point pattern analysis. Uh, point pattern analysis is a very broad field. It's actually a classic field in mathematical statistics. And recently it has seen a real resurgence in criminology and economic geography. So what we're going to do in this first part of the second module, there in total are five parts, we'll cover some um, examples first, just to set the stage. Then we'll cover some of the jargon, some of the terminology that's specific to point pattern analysis. And finally, we focus on an important characteristic of point patterns, namely the intensity, which is if you wish, the counterpart of the first moment of the mean of a process. So the way I'm going to do this is each of these subsections will be a separate uh, sound file to keep things manageable and to keep the file size down. So we'll start with going over some examples. And um, classic examples in the literature uh, come mostly out of forestry, plant ecology, astronomy, uh, locations of rocks, locations of digs in archaeology, and so on. In the social sciences, um, probably the most common application of point pattern analysis would be in criminology, looking for patterns in locations of crimes, locations of accidents, and the like. Um, in epidemiology, it's been used somewhat to look at the locations of persons with a particular disease, uh, specifically in the context of uh, cluster detection for cancer clusters, for leukemia, or trying to associate the heightened presence of certain cancers with the presence of a particular source, pollution source, a plant, or a, a toxic waste facility, and so on. In economic geography, and also uh, in the classical economic geography, which was a geography, um, uh, point pattern analysis has been used to look at the spatial distribution of facilities and, and settlements to see if there's any kind of uh, rhyme or reason to that. And as we discussed last time, um, in any spatial analysis, the point of departure is spatial randomness. And we're really interested in rejecting spatial randomness to identify particular patterns and then explain those patterns. And it will be the same in point pattern analysis. We will formalize the point of departure, the null hypothesis of complete spatial randomness, and then we will develop techniques that allow us to identify when a pattern does not match spatial randomness, which is really what we're interested in. So let me just show you some examples to set the stage. Here is a slide with the locations, the actual locations of all the car thefts in San Francisco in August 2012. You can actually download these data, this data from the San Francisco Open Data site and, and then plot it. Now, as you can see, these points are actually situated on the road network, but typically, in at least in classical spatial uh, point pattern analysis, the points are situated as floating in space. So this would be the representation of the San Francisco car thefts in a more traditional classical point pattern perspective. Uh, similarly, we can look at the locations of supermarkets. Um, in this case, in the city of Chicago, the black boundary shows the outline of the city and the green dots are the locations of the uh, supermarkets. Again, these are situated on the street network. Um, this particular example we'll be using throughout the uh, class presentations, but also as a, a major data source for analysis in the, in the lab later on. And again, if we take away the background, then we end up with the points floating in space, this time uh, constrained by the boundary of the city of Chicago. And then a final example 
uh, to set the stage is from a fairly recent paper by Duranton and Overman, which has um, basically been the introduction or reintroduction of spatial point pattern analysis in economics. Um, and this paper appeared in the Review of Economic Studies, and it was an analysis of the localization of different manufacturing sectors in the UK in specific. And, and just to set the stage, you see a fairly concentrated pattern on the left for basic pharmaceuticals, but much broader spread throughout the country for uh, pharmaceutical preparations. <clears throat> so this gives you a sense of the types of data that we will be dealing with. And, and next, we'll cover some of the jargon, some of the terminology.